All right, we're looking at the test, and we have uh, basically an instant pot. So we states we have are initialize, wait for event. Uh, when you select your option on the instant pot, you want to save that data, and then go back here. Every 50 milliseconds, you want to check the temperature, check the time, then go back to wait for event. When you press exit, you want to exit. And that provided the simple state machine uh, structure, which has these random things in here that we really don't need. Uh, so start pressure, we want the pressure light to come on and then come up to temperature, start saute, saute light comes on, start slow cooker, slow cooker, and when we're done cooking, we want to go into standby, and then when we press exit, we want to exit. So standard uh, data flow states are controlled by an enum type def. So over here, here's your enum type def. So we can right click and open type def. And then we can edit items. And so we initialize, wait for event. Uh, so we have save data, uh, check temp. We already have exit, so we want to insert, check our time. And now LabVIEW is trying to be helpful because it doesn't want you to have something mapped to the wrong event. So we come over here, user state 1, review and update, approve all, because we haven't done any programming yet. So now we're good for our enum type def and then uh, data for state machine wired in cluster so here's your cluster for the data so open type def uh, what do we need we need reset timer and heating which are boolean so reset timer and then if we Copy this in here. We can go to heating. Uh, time target is a double. So this is your time target. Uh, your save string, which is a string. And then lastly, we need our uh, option provided Boolean cluster. So we can control C copy and then come over here and paste and drag that in as well. So now we have our cluster. We can right click on the edge and reorder. So that time target, heating, and then the rest is okay. So now we just put our two booleans together. So now we have our data set up. Uh, low level file IO, so we're going to be opening and closing, etc. All errors are sent to the simple error handler that's here. So basically, we need to wire things with errors in our simple error handler. Uh, front panel. So here's our front panel. Uh, should be organized. We should have a chart displaying temperature history. So here's our chart. Displaying our temperature history. We want to go from 0 to 120 and right click. We don't want to auto scale. Uh, so this is time, and this is temperature in degrees Celsius. Uh, exit when exit is pressed is in the thing already. Thermometer indicator displays the temperature. So under indicators, we want a thermometer. And this is also our temperature. And we can make it 
a bit bigger. And we want to make it go up to 120 as well. So now we have our temperature uh, thermometer. Uh, LED displays our operation. Button is what's going to operate. A numeric input with cooking time. And a numeric indicator. And have our remaining time. So that's everything on the front panel we need. Uh, don't need our instructions. And I'll, I'll trust that we have everything we need there. And then what do we want to do? User input is cooking time. And remaining time. And maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Something like that is sort of organized. Uh, block diagram is organized. They should have appropriate descriptions. So this is your description. So you want to basically update this for every single state. In initialize, what do we want to do in here? Uh, we want to open the file for a low level file. So that would be a file and then open and then we want to uh, replace or create so it doesn't have to exist already and then uh, header of option and cook time are written to the file and so we want to write and so what do we want to write? Let's say option and then uh, cook time. And then a new line. And we need to wire our file across. Uh, here's our IP temp, so we'll copy it in here. And we want to call it with off. And then the option and data cluster is set to all off. So our option create constant is all off and next state is wait for event and we need to wire up our error like that we don't want to stop our loop uh, wait for event this is the event structure we have that and then this is one uh, so what do we want to do when the user input is changed so we want our user input, all elements, if anything is changed. Then we want to do stuff. What do we want to do? Uh, correct option light is selected from the data cluster. Let's see here. Let's create... A constant so cluster bundle by name and then here we're probably going to want to unbundle by name 
So if the pressure is done, or you want to do pressure, saute, slow cook. Uh, heating is set to true if start pressure is pressed. And so we have heating. We want to be matching start pressed. And then we want our IP. We want to set it to high if start pressure or sauté or low. So everything is based on low. And then we can use a select. So if the slow cooker is in, we want to use low. Otherwise, we want to use high. I. And then we need a button to save. All right, this is getting crowded. Uh, let's wire in our error. And we'll need cooking time in here. Uh, but remaining time and temperature. And then we can... All right. And so then what do we, we don't need our temperature history in here either. So then we can select this and edit create sub BI. So now we have our user input, output is heating. So now we have our output is start pressure. Uh, this should actually be heating. And then we also need our cooking time. Here to create our thing. So we can do another select. So if our pressure is selected, our option is going to be pressure. Otherwise, if Saute is pressed. Our option is going to be saute. Otherwise, it's slow cooker. And then we can add a format into string. And so we want a string, a comma, and a floating point, and then backslash n for a new line. So our string, and then our time, so far so good, control u for our magic. Uh, and so then this is going to be our save string. So now we need to output our save string and we need the input of our cooking time. So those are inputs and outputs, and let's save as, 
And then where are we saving it as? I don't know where we're at. How about downloads? Custom and start folder. Process option. And then we can make our name. Double clicking. We don't need that. We can make a box. And call it process option. Spelling doesn't matter. Alright, so now we want to process our option. We have our save string, which is here, and our cooking time is here. The reset timer is set to true. And time target is set to the value in cook time. Determined values are put into a cluster. Next target is save data. All right, every 50 milliseconds, that would be a timeout. So every 50 milliseconds. And then that would be here. And we want to edit events handled by this case. So application timeout is every 50 milliseconds. What do we want to do every 50 milliseconds? We want to go check temp if there's any option in the data cluster is if option in the data cluster. So we need to unbundle by name. We need our option. Otherwise, stay and wait for event. So you can use your cluster. You can convert your cluster to an array. And then we can or array elements. So if any of these are true, we're going to be true. And then we can use our select. And so if any of those are true, we want to go to check temp. Otherwise, we want to stay in wait for event. And we don't need this anywhere anymore. All right, and then goes to exit when exit button is pressed. That was already there. All right, so that was the hardest part of the test. In save data, we want to save the Save string. And control B. What I forgot to do is we need to set this up so that it remembers the uh, file pointer. And so we need to wire this across. every case. And so under save data, we want to write from text file. What we want to save is our save string. And the next is wait for event. Cool. Next date is check temp. Oh, I didn't call it right. Anyways, let's check temp. 
What do we want to do in check temp? IP call temp is called. Oh shoot, I lost it. It was in initialize as well. Copy it out with a control diet drag. All right. So there's check temp. We want to call it with check temp. Uh, temperature is displayed on the chart and the thermometer. So here is your chart. Here is your thermometer. Heating in the data center cluster remains on. So heating in the data cluster remains on if it uh, if the temperature is less than 115. So for it to remain on, both of those have to be true. It had to be on already, and the temperature is, if your temperature is less than 115. And then insert heating. Uh, next date is check time. All right. And then this is update and see if you are at temp. And don't forget, we need to wire the cluster across. And then exit. Let's jump to exit. Our file is closed. So the file needs to be closed. And then you can create a constant because you need something to fill up that. Uh, next state doesn't matter. Code, what else did we need? IP temp is called with off. We don't want to start any fires. Drag it out. So we need to call this. So we need to call this with auth, and the program stops. So that's that, and then, oh, so now we need to go to check time, and so we can add a case after, and so the data and the error automatically are wired across, but the uh, file pointer isn't. Uh, elapsed time is called with time target and reset timer. So control space to give you a list. Elapsed time. This is what we were using in the traffic light. And so we want it called with, let's see, it's time target reset timer. So time target, reset timer. So reset timer is set to true. Reset timer is set to true if time is elapsed or heating is true. So we have heating and or elapsed time is displayed if standby and option is true let's see so 
So in option standby. So this is your remaining time. And if, so basically we want to select. So if we're in standby, then we want to display the elapsed time. Otherwise, time target minus elapsed time. So we need some math. So it's time target minus elapsed time is displayed. Option is displayed on the front panel. So option all elements. We want to update that. When time is elapsed in the data cluster, the time... Oh my goodness, that's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, all right, so... What do we want? Something uh, time target is set to 999. Uh, standby light and option is set to true. So standby light is set to true. Uh, and IP temp is called with warm. Calling it with warm. And this we're wanting to do inside the case structure. Let's shove it over a little bit. And this is what we want to do when time has elapsed. Otherwise, we want to do nothing. And then we go to wait for event. And this is called with form. And we have a blank thing here, so we want to do that. Uh, so that should be everything. Uh, let's do five seconds. And so we start it. Uh, this is our data.csv since we used a comma. Uh, so start slow cooker. So what I forgot to do is in process option. What we didn't do, we've done this, but we forgot to. This is your new option. And so in this, we go here, and then our option goes there. Let's see if that did it. Start the program. Call it data. Start slow cooker. Slow cooker turns on. Time counts down. Goes to standby. Cools off. Go to saute. It goes up to high. So it goes up to a higher temperature near 120 uh, for five seconds. And then it goes down and it counts up now. Uh, for start pressure, 
basically the pressure is building up and once it hits the proper pressure then the time remains and it goes back down and then we hit exit and everything stops and looking at our data we have our option and our quick time 